guys. So many of you I can see. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Um, so sorry, had a little had a little hiccup there for just a second. So how is everybody? I'm so glad to see you guys. This is my first class here with Michaels. I am Sarah Ellis with Beatalon. And for today's class, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to put together a ring using the jewel loom here. And you're really not gonna need a whole lot to put this project together. Um, for those of you who have never used the jewel loom before, I think this is gonna be a great introduction to you guys for how to get started and um, really kind of a simple project that if you needed to like whip these up for a gift, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. This is gonna be a great um, project that you can of course change the colors up just depending on your mood. So we're gonna be putting it together using some of the pink and purple mix. I'm gonna show this to you guys in just a second more kind of up close, but you could definitely change this ring up and you know, and wear this ring you know, to go with your outfit for the entire year. So you, you can change, change it up that way. Uh, most importantly though, I just wanna show you and kind of get you acquainted with the jewel loom. For those of you who have never used it before, and maybe those of you who have, if you have never um, made a ring before, I'm gonna show you just how easy that is to do. A lot of times people ask me um, to make ring projects and I feel like um, this, is, this is a really good one and a beginner friendly one. So if you're interested in blinging up your fingers, this is gonna be a really, really fun and easy one for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys down on the mat so that you can see, we're gonna talk about the materials that you're gonna need for this project. And then I'm gonna show you how to warp the jewel loom and how to get started. So let's get to it, you guys. All right, so when you get your jewel loom, you will notice that it is laying nice and flat, but it comes with a rod. The rod is what is going to help you hold the tension in your project, and it's, it's gonna give the loom its, its bent shape. Now, when I say bent shape, what I really mean is it's just gonna be a slight curve. You definitely don't wanna snap this. It's it's plastic, so it's bendable, but it's, it's let's see, bendable is probably not the best word. It's it's curvable, if you will. So the first thing you wanna do is get your loom set up. You wanna take your rod and you'll notice that your rod has prongs on either end and on the flat surface of your loom, you've got two surfaces here. You have the flat surface with the two openings and then you've got your buttons on the back. This is actually where we're going to attach our bead stringing material and whatever, or I'm sorry, our material for our warps and then I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But first we need to do this part. So I'm going to just very, very carefully, again, I wanna show you from the side, you just carefully want to give it a curve. You don't wanna bend it in half. Insert one of the rods in one end. And then if you, if you want, you can actually use your body, hold one end up against your body to bend just slightly to snap that other end of the rod into place. So now when you take it away and you hold it away from your body, you can see you've got, you've got the rod here that's gonna hold that perfect curved shape for you for when you get started. Okay, so we have the loom ready. We're going to add our materials to that, but first let's talk a little bit more about what else you're gonna need for this project. So as far as the beads are concerned, I'm using size six seed beads. These are check seed beads from John Bead. I'm using the Hawaiian mix. And if you wanna see the finished ring, this is kind of what it's gonna look like. I didn't really do a pattern for this project. I really just tried to be as random as I could. I did leave out the purples, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I just wanted a strictly pink ring for this project. So these are the only beads that you're going to need and you actually won't use the entire um, container of the beads. So you'll have some beads left over. We're going to be using some of the wildfire for this. I'm using the 0 .008 in frost. So I'm using the white wildfire for this. And then you're only going to need a couple other things. You're going to need some scissors. You're going to need a hard beading needle and some 
GS Hypo Cement because we're gonna have to glue, add a little bit of glue to our knots. And then it's always good to have a measuring tape so that you can decide ahead of time what size of the ring that you're, you are gonna need. If you don't have a measuring tape on hand, you can, you can mark this with a piece of paper. So let me show you how to get started with that. And then we will add the warps to our loom. So what you wanna do is, if you're using your measuring tape, just pick a finger, whichever finger it is that you're gonna want um, your ring to go on. And then you just wanna lay that and go around your finger and then mark that. Write that down somewhere, whatever that number is. So mine for my index finger is right at about two and a half inches. So that's how much beaded area we're going to be making on the actual loom okay so so write that number down if you don't have one of these kind of bendable measuring tapes take a strip of paper and do the exact same thing and just mark the line where the two ends meet on your finger and then lay it up against a ruler to get that measurement as well okay so Let's get started with our loom. So we've already added the rod to our loom. So it's, it's ready to go and we need to add our warping material. So our warping material is gonna be the threads that run back and forth across the loom. That's what is actually gonna create the structure part of your ring or your bracelet if you're gonna make a bracelet. Um, it, it all kind of works out the exact same way. We need to make three warps, which means that we're gonna use four strands across our loom. Depending on how wide you want your band to be, you need one more warp than the number of rows of beads. So I've got three rows of beads, which means that I need four of the warps to go across. So let me show you how to do that. We're gonna turn our loom over to the back. And remember those buttons that I was talking about before, this is where we're actually going to attach our um, wildfire. And I like to work off of the spool. It's, it's really difficult to get in a, um, an accurate measurement. So the best way to do this is just to work off of the spool and, and always know that you've got enough. It's, it's nearly impossible to add when it comes to the warps. So I like to take the very end of my wildfire and just kind of loop it around my fingers to go ahead and create a loop. That loop essentially is gonna go around this button, but I like to go ahead and start to tie my circle first. So I'm just gonna take the tail end of my wildfire. I'm gonna loop it through twice. And before I pull that nice and tight, I'm gonna lay that over the button here and then pull, okay? And then I wanna do the exact same thing again. I'm just gonna loop through twice. So we're, we're creating a surgeon's knot here. I just find that a surgeon's knot for this is a little bit more uh, secure than just a regular overhanded knot. So we want to pull. Okay, then you wanna give this the tug test. You really wanna be sure that that knot is not gonna slip, it's not gonna come undone, okay? You wanna be sure also that your knot is up here towards where you're pulling. So there isn't any extra slack. You don't want your knot to be down here, pull your warps and then it, it work its way up to the top, you're gonna to end up with a little extra slack. So you don't want that. Tension is gonna be the name of the game when it comes to creating the warps on your loom. And for this project, you'll notice all of the tiny little grooves that are on the top of the jewel loom. We're gonna skip every other one and we're gonna put our wildfire into those. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So I'm still on the back here where my button is, where I've attached my wildfire. I'm gonna bring the wildfire up through one of the grooves, okay? And it doesn't matter which groove, just pick one. If you wanna start all the way over here on the edge, you can. I kind of tend to work a little bit more towards the middle um, unless I'm gonna be filling up the entire loom with warps, okay? Since I only, I'm only gonna make four, I can, I can pretty much settle this wherever I want to. So I just wanna be sure that I'm coming between two grooves, okay? And I'm going to take my wildfire and bring it down all the way down here to the other side of the loom. And I'm gonna place that into a warp down here. I don't get 
I don't get hung up on counting to make sure that they are exactly the same. In other words, I just want to eyeball it, right? I don't want to take this one over here so that it's it's like a diagonal. I want it to be as, as close to a straight line as possible, but I'm not going to count the spaces to make sure that I've got the exact same number here as I do on the top, okay? that's It's not really all that necessary. You just want to get kind of close, okay? So I'm pulling this thread nice and tight, and you want to hold that tension the entire time you are creating the warps. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it kind of sounds like a ukulele when you pluck it. You want to be sure that you've got that much tension on your wildfire. I'm going to come to the back now with my wildfire. Again, I'm holding that tension. I'm going to go around the button. Okay. And now I'm going to come back up and I want to skip a groove and go into the next groove. Okay, so hold that up there so you guys can see. So I've skipped one and laid it in to the very next one. That's going to be enough room to fit a size six seed bead in there. Okay, I'm going to take my wildfire back up to the other end of the jewel loom and place it into, again, skipping one and then putting it into the next one. Let's see here. Okay, now I'm gonna come back around here to the back, okay? Wrap around the button and then back up, skip one and place the wildfire in that groove. Hold on just a second. There we go, all right. I'm getting caught on my back button here with my, with my thread. Oops. And if you let go, that's okay, right? It's, it takes a little bit of patience to get to where you're used to going around the button, coming back up to the top, and holding that tension nice and tight. So if you let go, that's okay. Just reset, right, and, and pull again. It's not the end of the world. It does take, though, a little bit of practice. So don't be too hard on yourself if you don't get it that first time. Okay, again, down here on the bottom, I'm skipping and then coming back up here to the top. Okay, so now you can see I've got three, three open spaces here for our beads, one, two, three. And that is exactly the width of our ring. It is a little bit wider than it is going to end up when we get done. You can see the warps here are a little bit wider than what the finished piece is. That's okay. We're going to we're going to kind of bring it all together because the warps are a little bit larger than what the actual bead is. But it's better to have a warp a, an area here between the warps that is bigger than the bead that you're using just a little bit bigger, okay, not a whole lot bigger, but it's better to be a little bit bigger than to be too small so that you have to, um, you know, spread those those openings apart, okay? You don't want to distort your warps if, if at all possible. Also worth mentioning that we're using the size six seed beads for this. You can use whatever size bead you want to on the jewel loom. I'm using the size six seed beads just because it's a really beginner friendly kind of project and a beginner friendly seed bead size. You can use any size all the way down to 15s if you are really, really brave, all the way up to 10 or 12 millimeter beads even work on this as well. Um, just need to keep in mind that your spaces need to be as far apart as your biggest bead. So in other words, if you are putting together a bracelet or a ring that has some six millimeter beads mixed with 15s, mixed with you know eight millimeters or whatever, you want the warp spacing to be as large as your largest bead. And then you just wanna fill up the empty space with your smaller beads, if that makes any sense, you guys. I hope it does, okay? Now, I haven't connected or I haven't tied off here on the back, but I still have nice tight tension here on the front, okay? And I'm just really kind of holding that nice and snug as we are sitting here talking. I'm gonna flip this over to the back now and I am going to secure the wildfire. So what I like to do is I like to wrap around the button just a couple of times before I tie any knots. This is really gonna help to ensure that I don't lose any of that tension if for some reason I were to let go. You can see I have it, I have it, 
underneath my thumb here, holding on pretty tightly. I'm gonna trim off with my scissors and I'm leaving myself enough tail here that I can tie two or three good knots, okay? So I like to hold my, my thread out away from the button, wrap around and then kind of do a, a, a knot that's kind of out here in the open away from that button. I just find that it's a little bit easier. Okay, and then just want to kind of pull that loop down closer to the button here, if you can see, and then thread that through and pull. And again, you want to, you want to pull nice and tight. Okay, you don't want to lose any of that good tension that you've got here on the front side. And you want to do a couple of knots just so that you know that if one of your knots were to happen to come undone, that you still have to manage to wiggle three or four more loose, okay? So definitely give yourself at least two or three good knots, okay? Now, when you turn it over, you can let go, right? We've got all of our warps ready. We're ready to add our beads to the warps. But before we do that, the most important part of the entire project next to inserting the rod is taking the rod out. This is so important. And there are a lot of people who forget this step Taking the rod out is what's going to give you even more tension than what you were, you were able to create on your own, right? So we've got these nice tight warps. I'm gonna take my finger and lay it across the top of my warps here, across the grooves, just to hold all of those strands of wildfire in place. Again, I'm gonna take the loom, push it up against my body just slightly, so that I can pull out one end of the rod and then take out the other end of the rod. Now, what is holding the loom in that nice curved shape is the wildfire and not the rod. So you've got extra tension here. It really does make a big difference. So don't forget to take that rod out before you get started, okay? And you can pluck it, you can hear it. If you've got really good tension, you're gonna be able to hear it when you, when you take your fingers across it. Okay, so now we're ready. That part is all just set up. And for a lot of people, this is probably the, the part that they get most frustrated with and um, takes the most practice. The beading part, I think, is going to come very easily to you if you are a beginner. However, those of you who have never used a loom before, this is probably going to be the part that gets you tripped up. So take your time with it. Give yourself grace. Go slow, okay? And, and don't get frustrated with it. It takes practice to get good tension. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side just a little bit, and I'm also going to raise you guys up just a little bit, okay? And I'm going to lay out my beads. Now, when we work on the jewel loom, we work left to right, which seems kind of strange for those of us who are right-handed. Um, I, I know that it took me a while when I very first started to get used to working from left to right on a piece. I normally put my beads over here on my right-handed side, but because of the left to right, I'm actually gonna dump my beads out over here on the left just because it, it makes it a little bit easier for me, okay? And you're also gonna want to go ahead and get some wildfire. I'm using about four feet of the wildfire and I've thread this on to my hard beading needle. If you are a beginner when it comes to deciding how much to start with, Give yourself about three feet and then a little extra. You always want to, particularly in the beginning, you want to be sure that you have more than what you think you are going to need because in the beginning, it can be very frustrating to have to tie on. Yes, you absolutely can tie on, you know, but I, I don't recommend putting yourself in that position in the beginning unless you just have no way around it, okay? So give yourself plenty to work with. Go ahead and thread your needle. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pass our needle over and under our warps two times just to anchor our thread. So here's what I mean. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go underneath the first warp, over the second, under the third, and over the fourth. So now when I take my hand away, you can see I'm just kind of alternating there. Whoops. Sorry, you guys. Okay. I'm going to pull. Pull all of my thread. Oh, got a little knot here. I'm going to pull all of my thread and leave myself 
I want to leave myself about six inches of a tail. Okay, so leave a good six inches out here on, on your left-handed side. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go back the other direction. I'm going to take the needle under the first. And now I'm talking right to left. When I say first, we're over here on the right-handed side. So under, over, under, and over. Okay, and then pull. And you don't want to pull super, super tight. All we're doing right now is just anchoring our thread to the loom so that we don't accidentally pull all the way through our beads and all of our beads fall out. Okay, so just make two passes with nothing on your thread just to get it nice and anchored here and then just kind of push it wherever, you know, it's out of the way. Okay, since we're creating a ring and we're only working in an area that's going to be a few inches long, you really can work anywhere on the surface of the warps that you want to. If you're making a bracelet, you definitely want to try to center this in the jewel loom so that you've got even ends on either side. But with a ring, you you are not going to use up the entire workspace. So you really can just kind of start wherever you feel like it. Okay, so again, we're over here on the left-handed side. My thread is coming out to the left. My needle is over here. All of my beads are over here on the left. I have four warps and three open spaces. So I have room for three beads. I'm gonna pick up on my, on my needle, I'm gonna pick up three of the seed beads, okay? Now I'm gonna take my needle and pass it underneath. Now we're going left to right. I'm going underneath our warps, okay? Bringing the needle into my right hand. Now I'm gonna kind of use my, my, my index finger, my thumb to grab those three beads and kind of hold them in place underneath the warps. And with my right hand, I'm pulling that thread. Pull all of the slack out of the thread over here, okay? Now I want to just very carefully pop those three beads into their spaces, okay? So you can see one bead per space here, okay? I'm gonna hold those there with my index finger because now we need to secure them. In order to secure them, we're gonna create a wildfire sandwich, if you will, out of our weft, which is this thread that's going back and forth and our warps that are going up and down. So my needle is over here. My thread is exiting to the right. My needle's on the right. I need to go back through these beads from right to left, but I wanna go over the top of those warps, okay? And that's really, really important. That's what's going to create that sandwich of the wildfire. In order to make sure that I'm going over the top of the warps, I wanna hold it up and look at it. If you can see the metal of your needle between those beads, you know that you are over the top of those warps, okay? If your needle is underneath, then, then you do not, you, you haven't gone over the top. You need to pull out and go back in, okay? All right, I'm gonna to continue to pull and pull all of the slack out of my thread. and then pull tight. You don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna get crazy tight on it, but you wanna pull it so that now the wildfire is kind of closing in on those beads. And you've got three beads that are nice and secure within the rows. If your beads fell out, then you definitely did not go over the top of the warps, okay? And you need to, you need to just do it again. And that's okay. It takes a couple of times. It's totally okay. If you're just getting started, it takes a while to get used to that kind of under and over movement that you're going to make. But now we're over here on the left-handed side again. We're ready to pick up three more beads. So I'm going to pick up, and I'm just doing a random uh, selection of the beads that I have. I'm not really, not really doing a pattern, but you certainly can. You can lay out a pattern if you want to. I've picked up three beads, okay? I'm going underneath the warts from left to right. I'm going to pull the thread and again, when I pull out all of the slack, I'm gonna take my finger underneath and push those beads up into the spaces where they belong, okay? Don't take your finger away because they're gonna fall. You haven't secured them just yet. You wanna take your needle, again, over here on the right and go back right to left through the same beads, but over the top of the warp threads, okay? Double check, make sure you can see that needle between the the beads there and then pull. 
And that's really all there is to it. Once you can get that part down and you really figure out the under and over part to create your little wildfire sandwich with your, with your beads and your thread, you're good to go. The rest of the ring, the, you know, the length that you're going to need is just going to be a repetition of that. So we're just going to keep going. We're going to pick up three beads and we're going to bead until we've got about two and a half inches of beads here. So again, just picking up three beads underneath the warps, hold on to the beads, pull out the slack. Pop those beads into the warps and then take your needle, go left, or I'm sorry, right to left over the top of your warps and pull. You wanna be sure that you're pulling nice and tight. I want you to see there's, I don't have these, I don't have open loops. You can see where that wildfire is sitting nice and snug up against this outer warp. There, are, there isn't any open air in between there. Just be sure that you're pulling those nice and tight. Like you don't want to, you don't want to pull it so much that it breaks, but you definitely don't want to leave any wiggle room in there that eventually is going to kind of affect the entire structure. So just, just be mindful of that. That's all. Okay. Three more beads on my needle underneath the warps. Pop those into place and then take your needle right to left over the top of the warps and pull. And we just want to keep going. And I'm, I'm kind of avoiding the purple beads, but you can use any of the beads in this mix. In fact, there's enough of the beads in the mix that you could do a solid, um, a solid kind of that pearly pink, a solid of the um, kind of raspberry pink. There's, there's a lot of beads in here. Doing the rings, if you only do three rows wide, it really doesn't take a lot of beads. So you definitely will have some leftovers to play with, which is fun. I'm all about leftovers. Sarah? Yes. Somebody asked if you made uh, your bracelet that you're wearing, and if that was made on the loom as well. So the bracelet that I have on, you guys, somebody had asked if the bracelet that I had on was made on the loom. And the answer to that is no, but I actually do have a bracelet that is sitting here that I did make on the loom. I'll show you here in just a second. I just want to secure these three beads that I just added. So let me show you just a couple of of other things that you can make on the jewelry because it's really a wonderful tool that you can, you can use to create all kinds of different things. So this is a bracelet that I made on the jewel loom and I actually used hemp as my warps for this instead of the wildfire. So the, the threads that are running back and forth, the warps, I warped with some really pretty colored hemp and then I used wildfire to attach all of my beads. And you can see these are um, larger beads. I believe these are six millimeter beads. So you definitely don't have to just stick to seed beads. I know seed beads can be kind of intimidating to some people. So don't feel like you are, you know, you're in one of those uh, situations where seed beads is the, is the only thing you can use on the loom. That being said, not only can you use hemp or wildfire, but you can use leather, you can use um, cotton cording. You really can create your warps with any, any kind of stringing material that, that will fit in the grooves or at least sit on top of the grooves. So I've got that bracelet. I just used a button for the closure for this. So it's just a loop and a button. And then this one is a two hole bead. This one's much, much wider, but again, was done on the jewel loom. And these are two whole pyramid beads. They're flat on one side, so it, it fits nicely up, 
up against you, but you've got that really cool kind of spiky look on the other side. Again, I did this one with hemp and just used a button for the closure for this. So um, I, I feel like the rings is kind of a good, like a gateway into what all is possible with the jeweling because you can, you can create rings, you can create earrings, you can do pendants and bracelets a lot of different things and you are not limited to the materials or the beads that you use, which makes it a whole lot of fun. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going here, adding some more beads. Three beads. Okay, and then taking my needle from right to left to hold those beads in place. Okay. Pick up three more. Under the warps. Push them up into the spot where they go. And then back through with your needle. And then every now and then you want to bring out your measuring tape or the piece of paper that you have measured and just give it kind of a look so that you don't go too far. You can kind of check your progress here. We've got a little bit more to go, but it really does not take a lot of material to do this. So you can work up the rings pretty quickly. Some of my friends and I do uh, Galentine's Day in February in place of Valentine's Day. And these rings are, are really easy to work up once you kind of get the hang of it. Uh, and they make great gifts, right? Really good thing to whip up pretty quickly. You can change the colors up for everybody's different personalities, or you can make them all the same, you know? The patterns might be a little bit different if you're doing mixes like I'm doing, but the colors would be the same. All right, so just gonna keep going here. So if you're going to, um, if you're gonna be giving these away as a gift, this is a really good kind of tip for those of you um, who are selling your jewelry, or if you're just thinking about selling your jewelry, um, giving your, your jewelry, your handmade jewelry away as a gift and having people wear it is probably the best advertising that you can do for yourself. So uh, definitely don't shy away from that, you know, make some really beautiful pieces and give them to your friends and family so that they can wear them because they are essentially free walking advertisements for your jewelry and your handmade crafts and items. Um, I have more than once actually sold a piece of jewelry off of my body. <laughs> Be standing in line at the post office and have someone say, oh, I love your necklace, that's beautiful. And you know, that that's always an opportunity to say, really, thank you, I made this, uh, it's for sale. <laughs> I make jewelry to sell. I have, I have sold jewelry in that exact way more than once, so. Um, definitely, definitely use your friends and family as a, as a way to advertise your, your handmade pieces. There's no better way. And I always say that rings are, rings are kind of for everybody, right? Like I feel like necklaces, I wear and make necklaces for other people because it's hard for me to see them when I have them on, right? I, I wear a necklace so that you can look at it. It looks good with my outfit. Bracelets and rings I wear those not just for you, but for me, because I can actually see them. Um, so definitely take that into consideration as well. Like if you're making jewelry, you know, if you are an earring person and you make the best earrings ever, you know, make earrings, wear them, give them to your friends to wear, make the rings, you know, they get to see them, they get to enjoy the rings, but then other people get to see them as well. So always kind of take all of those little things into consideration. All right, so we're moving right along. We're getting pretty close here. Probably only got 
maybe five or six more rows to go. So picking up our beads, just three at a time. And you can see how this very quickly, you, you get a rhythm going with this. You know, once you kind of get the hang of it, picking up your beads, taking your needle back and forth, it becomes a very, very, very rhythmic. And one of those things that when you become really good at it, you can actually, you know, you can multitask and you can do other things. You can watch TV and, um, you know, do your beating. All right, I'm gonna do one more row and then I'm gonna bring the measuring tape out again, just to kind of look to see where we're at. Give that a good pull. Okay, I'm gonna park my needle right here on my bead mat and let's take a look here. All right, so looks like I went over just a little bit. That's that's okay with me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop though, because we're we're at a point where we can consider this done. If you have um, if you've accidentally gone over, you very easily can kind of wiggle your needle back through those rows and and take out a row or two if you need to. Um, but I'm gonna leave mine just as it is. And what I wanna do now is I really need to reinforce. And I like to reinforce the entire piece, um, but to save a little bit of time here, I'm actually not going to reinforce the entire piece, but I do want to reinforce this last row. And then I wanna come back up here and reinforce this top row. And I wanna show you how to do that so that when you're making your own piece, you can in fact go back through and reinforce the entire thing. So. What we want to do, we don't need to add any more beads at this point, okay? So all of the reinforcing happens with just our needle and our thread. We're going to take that needle and thread and we're over here on the left-handed side where we ended. We want to go back through this last row of beads and we actually want to go underneath the warps this time. So you want to insert your bead or your needle into that bead on the edge here and in order to get like underneath the warps, I just kind of very carefully push down on those beads. And then you can always pick it up and look at it to see, you know, you shouldn't be able to see your needle between the beads. You should, you should definitely be underneath those warps and then pull. Okay. And that's just one, one reinforcement. I'm gonna do that a couple of times. So I'm gonna go again. This time I wanna go over the top of the warps. So when I'm going right to left, I'm going over the top. When I'm going left to right, I'm going underneath, okay? So again, just kind of sandwiching with our wildfire thread, we're sandwiching over the top and under the bottom of those warps. So again, I wanna go into the beads, making sure to go over the top of the warps and pull, okay? And then one more time, I'm going underneath the warps. So I'm going in and out of the same beads, but I'm just being mindful of where my needle and thread are actually going when they're inside those beads, okay? And I'm gonna go back through one more time just so that my needle is exiting over here where we started, okay? All right, now I want to leave my thread, okay? But I do wanna take my needle off of this thread. So I'm gonna very carefully remove the needle from the end of the wildfire here, okay? Don't cut this off, leave this, we've gotta have this. But remember where we anchored our thread up here to the top, I want to just very carefully undo. So pull it out of where we had gone back and forth a few times, okay? So take that out from up here. And now I want to thread my needle onto our tail. And I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers. I like to use my pliers to kind of smash the end of the wildfire to make it nice and flat. I find that it makes it much easier to thread my needle. See, I got it on the first try that time. So it makes it much, much easier than 
having to fight with threading that eye of that needle. Okay, so now I just wanna do the same thing. This top row right here where we started, I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna thread through it a couple of times just to kind of reinforce it. So I'm just going back and forth, just like we did with that bottom row, just a few times. In fact, I'm gonna go twice, okay? Now I'm gonna take my needle and thread and I'm actually gonna do a half hitch knot on this outer warp. So I'm just going to go under like that to loop my thread around that outer thread and then back through the loop with my needle and pull. That's just gonna give me a little knot here on the outer warp and then I'm gonna go back through the beads and pull and that's gonna hide that little knot kind of inside that bead, okay? That's just gonna secure my thread even more so I don't have to worry that it's gonna come undone. I'm gonna go one more time to come back out here over on the other side. Okay, and now you can go ahead and trim this thread off if you want to. You can leave it and weave it back through if you want, but I feel like once you've kind of tied it off, you're, you're safe and coming in very carefully and trimming off the tail. Okay, so trimming that off. Now we only have just this one thread out here on the bottom. I'm gonna take my needle and place it right there. And now we're actually gonna go ahead and take our bead section. We're gonna take all of the bead work off of the loom, okay? And to do that, I'm gonna flip the loom over to the back and I'm actually gonna hold on to the entire bead work with my hand, okay? I'm gonna come up here with my scissors right next to the button and I am very carefully going to cut that free, okay? And then you wanna do the same thing down on the other side, just cutting it free. Don't cut off your tail. You still need this long tail that we've got. You just wanna kind of hold it out of the way for now because we do need to use it to sew our two ends together. But for the time being, just kind of keep it out of the way so that it doesn't accidentally get um, tied in here because we are gonna tie a couple of knots. So we are gonna start up here at the top and we have our warp threads here. I've got several inches of warp thread. I'm gonna take the first and the second warp thread and I'm just gonna tie those together with a knot, just an overhanded knot. I'm gonna pull that knot down to right up next to that bead, okay? Right up against it, okay? I'm gonna do that again, just an, over, an overhanded knot. So just two, two knots on that one. Okay, now I'm gonna take that one end that we were working with. So that was number two. I'm gonna take two and three and tie these two together. And again, just gonna bring that knot down close to the bead, okay? And a second overhanded knot for those. And then I'm gonna tie three and four together as well. So we're just securing the ends of our warps so that our beads don't slip off of our threads here. Okay, so now I'm just taking three and four and I'm gonna tie those two together. Okay. And then we're gonna flip this over and do the exact same thing to the other side. But before I do that, I actually wanna go ahead and use a little bit of the hypo cement. And I'm talking just the very tiniest tiniest amount of this on those little knots that you just tied. So very, very tiny little drop on each one. And then we'll let that sit a little bit while we flip this over here and tie the other ends together here. So I'm gonna take one and two, tie those together. Okay, and then I'm gonna take two and three and tie those together. And then three and four and leave that tail. It's gonna wanna try to sneak in there. Don't accidentally tie it in. Okay, now again, I'm going to come in with the hypo cement and just add the tiniest, tiniest little bit to the knots that we just tied, okay? 
And ideally, you probably want to walk away from this for a few minutes and really let this set up before you trim off your ends. But for time's sake, we are going to go ahead and trim. So I'm going to come down here to the other end and I'm going to trim off as close to my knots as I can get. Now, I don't want to accidentally cut the knots, right? I just want to get as close as I can. So you can see, I'll hold it up here. So you can see what's kind of left over. I've got just these little, little tiny pieces that are left over. If you let your glue dry a little bit longer, you can get even closer than that. But for what we're doing right now, that's totally fine, okay? And then I just wanna come over here to the other end and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold these out and trim off, okay? You can add more glue at this point if you want to. Um, I do add more glue, but I'm going to actually wait until we get our ends sewn together before I add any more glue. So that's what the challenge is going to be now. And this is really not hard, but for some, some people, it, it can seem confusing. So I'm actually going to draw this on a piece of paper so that you can kind of visually see what we're going to do. But before I do that, I do want to go ahead. Our tail that we had, I'm going to thread the needle back onto that tail. Okay, so we've got our needle ready to go. All right. So what we want to do is we want to sew the two ends together. Okay, and we're going to do that in kind of a kind of a stair step or kind of a zip kind of uh weave if you will so let me show you what i mean it's it seems like it's a lot easier if i kind of draw it for you so you can see it as as we go so on one end we have three beads right these are our beads and on the opposite end we also have three beads and we want to sew these three beads together our thread is coming out of this bead okay or wherever it happens to be so the path of the thread is going to be this. We're going to come, since it's already coming out of this bead, okay? We're going to come across and we're going to go into this bead. Of course, my pen runs out of ink. Let me grab another one. Okay. So we're coming out of this one and we're going to go into the one that's across, a, across from it, right? Going this direction. We're going to exit this bead between these two beads, okay, and jump up and go through that bead, right? Going through this bead out between these two beads, jump across and go out this way, okay? So essentially what we're doing is we're just doing this, right? It's just a zip. When we get here, we're going to turn around and go back the other direction. Okay, just the exact same thing, just flipped over this way. So now we're just gonna go like that. So our threads are gonna kind of cross each other, okay? So there's the picture if you need to like get a screen grab of that, but I'll walk you through it. We'll go nice and slow, okay? And we're gonna do it a couple of times because we have to reinforce that. But I just wanted you to get kind of a visual representation. It's a little bit easier to see it on paper before we kind of jump into it, right? All right, so here's what we've got. Our thread is exiting this bead here and we want to enter into, it's kind of difficult for me to hold this here so that you can see it, but just like our in our drawing, okay? We're coming out of this bead. We're gonna go into the outer edge bead on the opposite end and I'm coming up between the two, okay? So I'm not going through the entire row. Okay, and then you want to pull your thread. When you pull your thread, now you're going to pull those two ends together, right? Makes a little bit more sense. We're exiting the middle bead here on the row down here on the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. We're exiting this bead here. Not the middle bead, the first bead. We're between the first and the middle bead. We're going to come jump up across here, go through the middle bead. And you do kind of have to wiggle your wiggle your needle around to get in there though, okay? Coming through that bead and pull, okay? 
Now we're going to jump down and we're going to enter into that bead on the outer row and pull. Now, what you're going to notice is all of our little knots. Okay. And what we want, you can see they're kind of crowding the space in here. We want to push all of those into the inside of the ring. So any of these little stragglers, the little ends that you see where we've trimmed off, you can come in with a beading awl or your scissors, the tip of your scissors. You just wanna kind of push those to the inside of the ring, right? So that all of that is on the inside. That's gonna help you kind of get to, number one, it's gonna make the outside of your ring nice and clean. You're not gonna see any of those knots, but it's also gonna help you to better see now as we're doing that kind of zip up motion with our needle. So our, our thread and our needle are exiting out here, okay? We're gonna go up to the bead next to it up here, right? Jumping up, we're, we're exiting our needle between that first and second bead, pull, Whoops. Okay. Whoops, hold on. We're exiting between these two. We're gonna come down here. So we're only working in these two rows here. So I haven't, haven't made any crazy jumps or anything like that. Okay, taking my needle through that middle bead. and pull, okay? And then jumping back up to the other row and out that bead. All right, and you just wanna do that maybe two or three times. It doesn't take a lot. You just wanna be sure that you're pulling your thread nice and tight. You've got even tension on it. There are no open spaces. You don't wanna see any big gaps you definitely want to tuck all of your knots in there. So take some extra time to do that. And once you've gone through the kind of zipping pattern at least two times, now you can take your needle and we're not gonna zip through. We're actually, we're exiting that row, the, the top of the two of these rows, right? I'm gonna go into the bottom row and I'm gonna go straight across. And this is just gonna be some extra reinforcing, right? This is just, just one more pass through the rows, just a solid pass, okay? But the zipping part, that ha you have to do that part first. It really will help to keep your ring nice and secure to not skip that step. So don't feel like you can just kind of just do the back and forth and around and around. You definitely want to to do the little zipping if you can, okay? All right, so now I've got tail left over, right? I have all of this extra thread and you can take your extra thread and you can weave through a, a few rows and tie a knot and then consider yourself done. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So now I'm gonna come down a row and I'm just gonna sew through maybe two or three rows right? And I'm just going back and forth. I'm not really paying any attention to whether I'm over or under the warps or anything like that. I'm just kind of sewing in my tail. There's nothing really um, more to it than that. Just kind of going back and forth, okay? You do want to, at some point, take your needle underneath the outer edge of a warp, either on the left or the right, makes no difference. And again, do another one of your half hitch knots, so pull a loop and then take your needle and pull it through the loop. Pull that down right up next to the warp and then go in another row or two. Don't cut right next to your knot. Try to pull that knot into a bead so it's not on your, your outside edge or anything like that. Go in a couple more rows and then we will cut that off. And I will then go to the inside here and we will kind of clean up our knots just a little bit. Okay, so I've reinforced um, my, my thread. I've gone through a few more rows. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just trim that off, okay? Now, we are free, 
right? We've got our ring and you can just put it on and wear it at this point. But I like to go in just because I'm a little, I always get a little nervous about the knots on the inside of the ring. That's the really the only way to do it. Um, it's the only way that I've ever seen it done. Um, but because these knots are on the inside, they are going to rub up against your skin as you wear your ring. And of course, rings will spin around your finger. I mean, they move. All of your jewelry is going to move, which means that your knots are kind of, you know, they're kind of at the mercy of how you wear this. So what I like to do is I like to just add even more glue. And I'm not talking big globs by any means, but I do like to come in again and just add a little bit more glue to those knots and then after I let this dry I will come in with my cutter tool or really sharp pair of scissors and you see those little those little straggly pieces there I'll trim those off even closer to the knots um, as I can possibly get so all of that work is going to be on the inside nobody will ever see it when you're wearing your ring from the outside your ring should look completely seamless right but on the inside of your ring you can see this one that was already made you've got you've got your knots in there. That glue is gonna hold up really, really well, as well as the wildfire. So the wildfire is waterproof. It is color fast. Um, if you use it in the colors, the colors are not gonna bleed or anything like that. Um, the only thing is, is that I, I don't recommend, even though it is waterproof, I don't recommend that you shower. Um, and I even take mine off when I'm washing my hands. It's a, it's a durable piece of jewelry, but still I treat it like everything else. I take everything off um, when I'm washing my hands. And nowadays when we are using so much hand sanitizer, I even take the hand sanitizer off too. Uh, or I take the rings off before I put the hand sanitizer on as well. Um, just because I'm not really sure how the alcohol in the hand sanitizer mixes very well with the hypo cement. I just don't want to risk it. I don't know that it would eat away at those knots, but you really just never know. I mean, hand sanitizer is some pretty, is some pretty stout stuff. So, <laughs> all right. So we've got our rings here ready to go and ready to wear. Work those up pretty quickly. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this project. I'm going to turn you around and then we will part ways for our afternoon here. I just want to thank everybody for joining me for my first class here um, with Beetleon and Michaels. It was it was fun. I was nervous. Could you tell? <laughs> but thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this is just the beginning of many more classes to come where you guys can come and hang out and learn how to make some cool jewelry with me. Just give you another another little look here at our rings. And guys, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. Always available to answer your questions and help you with your BD needs. All right, guys, that is it for me. Thank you. I will see you again very, very soon. Bye, guys.